The news day continues here on One News Now. I'm Riza Diaz. As the country continues to log more COVID-19 deaths, more crematoriums have reached their full capacity. Such is the case in Cebu City. Jeva Vansenya with the story. Aside from its COVID-19 facilities, crematoriums in Cebu City have also reached full capacity due to the rising COVID-19 death toll. In this funeral parlor in Barangay Lorega, San Miguel, COVID-19 corps are prioritized for cremation. Because of this, it took at least one week before the parlor could accommodate non-COVID cadavers. The same situation is observed in cosmopolitan funeral homes in the city's downtown area. One source said their cadavers are being piled up in their freezer since their crematorium could only accommodate four cadavers per day. In a press conference, Consular Joel Garganera disclosed that from August 1 to 5, Cebu City recorded 27 deaths. At least 15 died in the hospital, five were declared dead on arrival, while seven others died in their homes. Garganera warned that this is a huge leap from just 14 deaths in June. Ang last month na to 86 na itong nangamatay sa COVID last month. June, that's 14. So that's a big leap, no? Times 5. Times 5. Almost times 6. No? Ang atong deaths sa July. Cebu City Acting Mayor Mike Rama admitted that it has been a challenge to schedule cremations in the funeral parlors. But he explained that they are already fast-tracking the proposed cremation unit under the Cebu City Medical Center. We have to be aggressive, not as for this, but also for the future. We'll be checking where in the structure the city government, that it can be fast-tracked and be facilitated. Anyhow, we, we easily can have a space for that. Based on the latest data from DOH Region 7, Cebu City has logged 972 COVID-19 deaths so far. The city, along with Mandawe and Lapu-Lapu, were placed under alert level 4 due to the rising COVID-19 cases and high hospital occupancy rates. For News 5, Gem Avancenia, we are One News. The health department reports over 11,000 new COVID-19 cases, the second consecutive day that the country has reported over 10,000 new infections. This has brought the country's total caseload to 1,649,000, with some 76,000 still considered as active. At least 162 more deaths were confirmed overnight, pushing the death toll to 28,800. Total recoveries now stand at 1,544,000, with more than 9,000 new survivors logged in the past 24 hours. The University of the Philippines is distancing itself from independent think tank Octa Research Group. This came following a push for a congressional inquiry into the group's composition and methodologies. In a statement, the country's premier state university said that while it encourages its scholars and researchers, researchers to pursue their projects, the OCTA research team's activities are not connected with the university. The UP has also deleted posts of OCTA research on its official website. To give us more insight into the latest COVID-19 numbers, joining us on the line is Professor Guido David of Octa Research. Sir Guido, good evening. Hi, good evening, Riza. Sir, uh, it is the second day that we are seeing or logging in more than 10,000 new cases. Can we say we're peaking and what's the possibility, Sir Guido, of the figure increasing further at this rate? Uh, unfortunately, Riza, uh, I cannot say that we, I mean, I cannot say based on science that we are peaking already. Um, cases are still you know, rising in the NCR, but we're hoping that because of the ECQ that there will be a slowdown in cases. Uh, yesterday, uh, we actually had 2,400 uh, cases more than 2,400 cases in the NCR, which is the highest uh, since around May, I, I believe. Um, so, so this is, of course, um, very possibly um, brought about by the Delta variant. Um, uh, the reproduction number in the NCR is still around 1.7. So that means it's not going to go down 
uh, quickly. The cases are, will not be going down quickly. We hope that um, based on uh, history and past experience that the reproduction number will uh, start decreasing almost immediately because of the ECQ. And if that happens, we are hoping that uh, perhaps cases will start decreasing um, around the two-week mark. Uh, but we are still going to be, uh, you know, rechecking our models, recalibrating them, because as far as we know, um, you know, the, the proportion of the Delta variants has increased uh, in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So, Guido, you mentioned that perhaps the increase in the number of cases could be attributed to, of course, the highly infectious Delta variant, and the health department would also say the same. But would you also agree that it is also due perhaps to um, the observance of minimum health protocols? Well, um, I, I don't subscribe to the idea that it's because we are not observing minimum health protocols because... Uh, in fact, um, from uh, May 16 until June, and in fact, until the, the middle of July, um, basically we were, uh, you know, I mean, there was no increase in cases. Uh, cases were, in fact, uh, decreasing. And uh, I don't think the there's a change in the observance of minimum health protocols. So uh, based on sampling, what we're seeing right now is that the percentage of the Delta variant in the sampled cases, uh, in the genome sequenced cases, has increased. It's now about 30 percent. And uh, mm -hmm. that is actually a strong um, evidence that the number of Delta uh, variant cases has really been increasing. Mm -hmm. Professor David, how do we expect the two-week lockdowns to affect the number, the rise of new infections? Well, um, uh, over the past uh, few days, um, before the ECQ, the uh, rate of increase of the number of cases has actually accelerated, and of course this is concerning. Um, but with the ECQ, uh, we hope that it will definitely slow down the, um, uh, the reproduction number. It will start decreasing the reproduction number as we break chains of transmission. So, so we're hoping that it will start to decrease after two weeks, um, but we will have to see um, how uh, the numbers uh, fall within the next few days. Mm -hmm. Sir, in another issue, we'd like to know how is Okta Research Group reacting to the possibility of a congressional probe? And have you and the other members of, of course, the team have been talking about this? Well, uh, Riza, we, uh, you know, we support the uh, the national government, the um, you know the the institutions of the government, government, the local government, uh, the Congress. So, um, any way that we could work with um, agencies of the government, you know, we welcome that. So, if it's uh, about sharing our methodologies um, and uh, you know. Um, uh, assessing our credibility in this matter, I mean, we're happy to work with the, um, you know, with the, with the Congress. So um, we haven't really talked about it that much with, within the group, um, but but yes, um, you know, we're definitely um, very open to sharing our methodologies uh, with our congressmen. Mm -hmm. Professor, the University of the Philippines has deleted all of Okta research-related materials previously posted on its website. What can you say about this? Well, uh, I was actually surprised that they deleted the, um, uh, the um, reports. Or These are actually scientific articles, and they were all written uh, last year until around July of 2020. I mean... Uh, our first report was actually, you know, it was a University of the Philippines um, report, uh, nothing to do with Okta research. Um, it was just uh, around July when we started uh, differentiating ourselves as the Okta research group. Um, you know, so I understand if they want, uh, you know, they don't want the Okta research articles posted there. In fact, we, d we didn't have um, Okta research articles posted there. I mean, right now, uh, for example, this year, uh, our reports are uh, branded as Okta research, but last year they were still uh, University of the Philippines publications, and uh, w 
you know, our first reports were written as UP professors. So uh, it was actually uh, a little surprising that they decided to delete these um, um, first, these early reports that we published. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, sir, for sharing with us your time. That is Okta Research Fellow, Professor Guido David. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, the Interior Department issues a joint guideline for the release and distribution of Ayuda in the National Capital Region. Joint Memorandum Circular Number 3 states that an individual could receive 1,000 pesos. Low-income families, meanwhile, could receive a maximum of 4,000 pesos. LGUs are given 15 calendar days to manage the distribution of the financial assistance, but this may be extended upon the request. DILG Undersecretary Eduardo Anya noted that the Social Welfare Department shall provide technical assistance to the LGUs. The PNP has also been directed to provide security assistance to LGU personnel in charge of the distribution of financial aid. China is not spared from the Delta variant as the highly infectious variant reaches half of its country, resulting in its worst COVID-19 outbreak yet. More details in this Bloomberg report. Howdy folks, this is Alan. I'm here in Shanghai, where there's a growing sense of anxiety, not just in the city, but across China, now that the Delta variant has spread to China's shores. Just by having one of the highest rates of vaccinations in the world at more than 60%, China's also seen uh, an upsurge. Right now, um, almost half the country, about 15 provinces, are seeing cases. There's more than 500 confirmed cases around the country, and that's leading to a host of measures in order to stamp out this latest outbreak. In Beijing, officials there are taking measures such as uh, limiting train and subway usage. Uh, they're limiting the number of people who can visit parks. And they're requiring people to undergo two-week quarantines uh, if they're coming from uh, high-risk areas. In Shanghai, where there are the fewer uh, cases, we're seeing uh, a lot more uh, places that require people to flash their uh, QR codes. It has to be green, of course, as well as everyone has to wear a mask. And school officials are telling parents to return as soon as they can and not to go out, not do any more traveling during the summer vacation. And business travelers are being told to not to actually do any business travel during this period. And there's definitely a growing sense of anxiety. I can speak from my own personal behalf. I was recently in uh, Xi'an to check out the, the terracotta soldiers. Halfway through, uh, our guide told us that they were no longer allowing visitors in and we were actually chased out. 控制咱们国家，控制挺好的，但他们这种没有时间的，没事没少的，这这受不了，这种精神上受不了，这种压力。So the big picture is this. I mean, China has done a really good job of controlling COVID-19, and uh, that's why this latest outbreak due to the Delta variant uh, has caught the government and caught everyone off guard. And the ramifications are huge, not just for the Chinese economy, but for you know the rest of the world. And it can also impact the Beijing Olympics, you know, which, which is happening in February. So whether or not people can come is, is, is definitely up in the air. This is Alan Wan for Bloomberg News. And for more updates, visit News 5, the Philippine Star, and Business World Online. You may also visit our website, onenews.ph, for more in-depth analysis. You can also catch One News on Signal Play app. Register for a free account now at www.signalplay.com and stream One News Live anytime, anywhere. I'm Riza Diaz. Mask on, wash hands, and stay safe, Philippines. We are One News.